Home Airtel Money Wallet. Airtel Money. Instant, secure, border. Subsidiary of First Quantum Minerals Limited. About 16 months ago, Zambians voted out the Patriotic Front and gifted the UPND the position of ruling party. Now, since independence, Zambians were giving a fourth political party, the UPND, a destiny to decide their fate. But the UPND seems to have come at what many may describe as a turbulent time. High cost of living, gas prices, and low water levels in the Lake Kariba that has spiked one of the worst load shedding cases since 2015. However, some leaders, especially those in the opposition, some being Zambia must prosper, feel that most of these challenges could be better handled by competent leadership. My name is Costa Monson. and welcome to this week's edition of Costa. Tonight, we discuss an array of issues facing the country. My guest is the president of the Zambia Must Prosper Party, or movement rather, in Mr. Kelvin Walia Fue. Happy New Year to you, and uh, <laughs> welcome back to Thailand. Thank you very much, Costa. You always do that, don't you? It's Kelvin Fuwe Wadi. I'm used to KBF. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> so, Good evening, viewers. <laughs> thank you so much. Um, let's start with the elephant, really, in the room. And um, suffice to say that uh, for those who are unable to watch us tonight, they can quickly you know, download the Airtel TV app and watch the live stream mm. via you know, phone or subsequently Diamond TV Zambia on Facebook. I say for those that cannot watch us tonight, we've gone into level four of the load shedding. Mm. But I'd like you to quickly just touch on how this whole episode has turned out. For me, it's the misinformation that stems from the president's end of year press conference when he promised Zambians that he was working in the background, round the clock, from New York, and that we would not experience, you know, sorry, load shedding. But suffice, it has happened. Um, Zesco board and management apologizing for misleading the president. He had to go to Mamba. What do you make of this whole, you know, saga or drama, as one may call it? Costa, let's start from the very important point of understanding that we have a president in State House today who is a liar. I'm sorry to call him that. This is a president who has been lying since the time he was in opposition up to the time he's in State House today. That's the premise I want Zambians to understand, the kind of president and the kind of leadership we <coughs> have today. So everything that the president speaks about or talks about or pronounces, I would rather the Zambians take it with a pinch of salt because he never tells the truth. That is who Haga Inde Ichirama is. He's a liar. So don't take him seriously. He'll lie to get into office. Now he's lying to stay in office. 
And that's the problem we have. Load shedding today is supposed to be a thing of the past because this country has enough power not to have load shedding. We are talking 3,450 megawatts of power being produced by the known hydro power stations. That is not to count the solar panels on people's rooftops. It's not to count other things that people have decided to use to make power by themselves without using Zesco. At the peak, this country is supposed to be using 2,300 megawatts of power. I can tell you today that Mopani and KCM on the Copper Belt are not working at full throttle. Therefore, we have a saving from there because they're not using as much power. <coughs> we also know that the manufacturing sector is not operating at full throttle because of the way the economy is running. So there's a saving also there. Why are we having load shedding? The reason we're having load shedding is because we have a president in State House who would rather sell power to his neighbors whilst his children, the Zambians, who he's supposed to be taken care of, are suffering. He doesn't care. This is a president who doesn't care about you or me or whether our businesses falter as long as it looks good to the outside community. And that's the problem. Load shedding today with what was done by the Kafue Gorge Lower, having commissioned 650 megawatts of what was supposed to be 750 megawatts, we shouldn't be here. Why are we concentrating also just on the Kariba Dam? To me, it's, it, it's telling you that this president doesn't understand that we know the geography of this country. He flies to Kariba for a photo op and he wants to make it seem like he's very concerned about the dam wall, about the water levels in the Kariba. He's not. This is a president who lives like he's playing a drama club. He wants people to think and feel that he cares. I kind of doesn't care. You call him a liar. Who really then is telling the truth? You, you, you talk about 3,400 megawatts capacity. That's what at least the PF then told us they had built right. capacity right. after bringing on board Kafue Loa, right. uh, Iteziteji, you know, uh, the mix of, of Mamba and, and Kariba itself. Mm. Um, the UPND now are telling us that we only have capacity of about 1,080 and, <laughs> you know, the PF and, and, and previous governments had done no investment in the last, you know, 50 years. They now say they are marshalling. Uh, we saw the presidential advisor for finance and investment talking to the Brits with an investment of about two billion pounds. We saw the other day they are going into Dubai to try and bring on board five gigawatts, they say. So who's really telling the truth? And again, we keep on hearing the story uh, of the UPND always pointing a finger at the PF, to the extent that even water in the Kariba was used up by the PF. <laughs> That's the whole point, Costa. I mean, the kind of leadership you have today is not going to be worried about whether or not you call them out or not. They, do, they just don't care. The, all the things that you've said are correct, but that's the kind of leadership you have. They're incompetent. They're incompetent because they lie. They're incompetent because they misrepresent the facts. They're incompetent because they want to make it seem that they're in charge when they're not. I last appeared on your program here, and I was talking about the budget. You remember what I said about the budget? They don't read the finer prints. Part of the finer prints that were given to them as conditions by the IMF is that subsidies must go. You and I are sitting here, and very soon, I'm sorry to say, power will go up. Electricity is going to go up, and I'm sure fuel is going to go up. Now, if that, those two components go up by way of you know, increasing, rest assured, 
cost of doing business is going to go up. And you and I are going to have to squeeze and squeeze and squeeze. So, just trust me on this one. You never hear Akainde Ichidem I tell you the truth. The president of this country is a liar, and we must call him for what he is. That's it. And what has turned out, unfortunately, is that most of his technocrats have also fallen into lying, and therefore he calls it being misinformed. No, the technocrats have to sing his song so that they seem good, because that's what he likes. He doesn't like being told the truth. If you tell him the truth, he cancels the truth, he tells you what you should tell him, and then when you say it to him, he says you're misinforming me. Nobody misinformed again. Figures don't lie. For example, um, <coughs> you talked of those numbers that you mentioned. Kariba North Bank has got 1,080 megawatts. These are figures. Figures don't lie. Kariba North Bank, this is the extension, by the way. Kariba North Bank alone has got 360 megawatts. Kathue Goj power station, the original power station, is at 990 megawatts. Kathue Goj lower is supposed to be operating at 750 megawatts, but the commissioned is 650 megawatts. Lunzua, 14.8. Lusiwasi, 12 megawatts. Lusiwasi, lower, 15. Victoria power station, Victoria Falls power station. 108. Chishimba Hydro, 15. Muswanda Falls, 10. Itage Tej, 120. The independent Mamba Collieras, 300 megawatts. Ngoye Plant, 28 megawatts. Bangweulu Solar Plant, 54 megawatts. Ndola, this one operates on hard oils, 110 megawatts. Lusemfa, 56 megawatts. Now, put these figures together and the amount of power I said at peak this country is supposed to have, we shouldn't be having this load shedding. So it's very clear that power is going somewhere else. And where it's going is because, as you remember, the president flew to Tanzania, he flew to Namibia, he's been to South Africa, he's been to Botswana, he's been to Swaziland, he's been to Namibia. He, all these places he's gone to, he's gone to sign deals to export our power. How many times is Zambia going to be bailing out some of our neighbors? Because during the independence struggle, we bailed them out. Now we're doing the same thing what, what at is our your, expense. What, what is your solution from a Zambia must prosper perspective on this? The argument of the president, he's very clear, his energy minister is not shying away from that. They're saying they are exporting power for two reasons. Job creation, they say. Mm. Two, they don't want to lose on future markets. And the president has made it very clear. It's business. And you're going back to exactly what I told you before. We have a businessman in State House, not a president per se. He's not a politician. To him, everything is about profits. A government does not run to make profits. A government runs to provide services to its people. He's made it very clear we need to run this country like a business. We can't. <coughs> Unfortunately, we can't. No matter what you say, look at the history. Wherever you're going to make business, go and do business where you're supposed to do business. That's why I kept saying, if he wants to run a business, let him resign and go and do business. We must provide services for our people, and we can't run it as a business. It can't. There are certain things we must do, whether we like it or not. And we must provide certain services, whether we like it or not. That's how governments function. So you cannot be telling me that you'll be running a business when some old lady, somewhere in Namushakendi, is suffering. And you're happy about that because you want to make your neighbors happy. That's being irresponsible. And I'm sorry to say, this is one of the most irresponsible presidents we have right now. And I'll call him that to his face. Aga Indei Chilema is the most irresponsible president we've had in terms of taking decisions to protect the Zambians. He's not being helpful to the Zambians. And he'll continue to do that as long as he's making a profit. But part of this profit that he wants to make 
is because he wants to be paying back loans which he says he has to clear a debt burden. You don't clear a debt burden by creating chaos in your own country. It doesn't work, Costa. Nobody does that. That's being irresponsible to the worst. And I don't think I'll apologize over that. So, in short, we must stop the export of power, irrespective of the contractual obligations we have. What does this again spell for, you know, local businesses? What are you saying from an opposition point of view? What, what must we be doing instead? You cannot give what you don't have. You only give the surplus. Like I said, we've got 3,450 megawatts of power at peak production. We need 2,300. We keep the 2,300 of megawatt power here in Zambia because we need to use it. The rest we can export. But we can't export more than we don't have. That is irresponsible. That's all I'm saying. And for me, if anybody wants to buy power from us, only the component which is higher than 2,300 megawatts is what we give out. No more, no less. That's a responsible government. That's what Zambia must prosper would do. Zambians first, not outsiders first, no. Just quickly before we touch another you know, thorny issue, um, I know you've, you, you've scratched a bit on um, technocrats you know, pandering to the president's you know, wishes, but mm. the, the, the kind of circus you see when the whole lot of a board chairman comes out <laughs> on radio to apologize and says he misled you know, the president, this ESCO MD, surely this reeks incompetence. And, and if we mean serious business or leadership, shouldn't heads be rolling you know, on this? I mean, 12 hours of load shedding and you did not give the fact somebody must <laughs> bear the brunt, really. You mean Mr. Kube? Somebody the, must. The board chairman. I mean, somebody must be fired. He can't, Haga in the HLM, I can't fire the board chairman because the board chairman did exactly what Haga in the wanted him to do, to lie. He was taking the blunt and saying that he misled the president. He did not mislead the president. The president thought the Zambians would not catch on, but the Zambians did. And then the board chairman was sent, like, you know, a cat among us, the pigeons, to go and say, no, I'm sorry, it's my fault. It's not his fault. That's what Haga in the wanted. He wanted somebody to take the blame. But that's not who he is. But you're right. Politically, from a moral perspective, if somebody lies to the president, somebody misleads the president to this degree, and the president knows that he was misled to this degree, the president must fire him. But he can't fire him because he knew from the beginning that this lie had to be told. Do you see... President Haga and the HLM are having grips or a clear understanding of really the sufferings of what is going on in this country, the Copper Belt and, and, and many other places. And I'd just like to, to draw you to the fact that uh, in his last uh, end of year address of 2022, mm. he made it very clear that he had concentrated on bringing back, you know, Zambia to the, he calls it to the, International League or to the Champions League and 2023 will be a year of unlocking rigidities towards domestic development. So in a way he's saying look, I, I was not so present in 2022 but 2023 we will concentrate more on local affairs and unlocking rigid. Does the president have grips on really what's going on? No. I'm sorry to say that the president does not seem to understand what's going on. And if it does, it's very little that he understands. Aka in the Ichilema lives in a bubble. And the bubble that he lives in is the IMF bubble. As long as he's doing what the IMF wants, he doesn't care about the Zambian people. And he'll just do what the IMF wants him to do. He's their blue-eyed boy. Whether you like it or not, that's what we've got for a president today. And that's who he is. So... When you say, does he care? No. How can he care? Because it will go against what he promised the IMF. Take an example. 
you let power go for 12 hours. Intermittently, they will tell you six hours, then there's a break, another six hours. But what does it do for the ordinary woman who's keeping quails? What does it do for the ordinary woman who's trying to rear chickens? What does it do for the ordinary man who runs a barber shop? What does it do for the ordinary woman trying to run a salon? What does it do for the guys trying to run a wedding and trying to go to church in the morning? They have to wake up zero two in the morning and start doing their hair. It's all the inconvenience, Costa. It's, it's a country that we've been brought to believe is normal. This is not normal. This is abnormal. But it doesn't matter to work in the HLM because he's got his power 24-7. And he will not care about you and me and the ordinary man on the street because that's not his business. So the guys who are doing the welding along Alec and Carter Road, do you want them to be waking up at 0 2 in the morning to go and start doing welding? What about the people who want to sleep? What about the people who run bars, restaurants? How are they going to do their business? Power comes at 0 2. Who's going to be in a restaurant at 0 2, Costa? It doesn't make sense. The whole thing is shambles, right through. They didn't think this thing through, as usual. The UPND never thinks things through anyway. Any policy pronouncement that they pretend to make, they never think it through. And yet, this is the kind of opposition they were. They stayed in opposition, and we thought, they've got this. They've spent so much time in the opposition. Surely, they must have learned something. They must have planned something. There are no plans. The president has put in place a technical committee or a task force comprising various stakeholders. What do you make of this approach? The last meeting they held at State House, he's, he called for calm heads and he says, lots of people, you in the opposition, and everybody else was busy screaming out of ignorance and, and he would not be swayed from telling the Zambian people the truth and call things as they are, but he sees a solution in the offing, especially for, for the future. Is this a correct approach? We have this mix of experts sitting to resolve you know, the load shedding problem. Costa, Zambia must prosper has information that the president doesn't listen to anybody apart from some Europeans who are working with him at State House. That committee <coughs> is just a facade to blind the Zambians that something is being done. But we know that he's getting his instructions from some white boys who have come from someone. And we're not interested in their solutions. They can't bring us solutions here when they don't understand what's going on. They've never lived here. They want to come and import a solution because they think this should work for them. As far as we're concerned, the solution of load shedding is simple. Export only the power which is surplus. Beyond that, no, you don't need a technical committee for that. It's that simple. I mean, who are you trying to lie to? Technical committee to discuss what? We've got enough power. And in the figures that I read to you, for example, I didn't even include the two, the two or three, five megawatt power station which we put up uh, uh, at the Shuangandu. Shuangandu Castle never had power. That whole area never had power for a long time. A lot of power can be created just along streams. They're not looking at that. Mm. And for me, this technical committee is a waste of time. It won't work. And it's just one of those things that is saying to the Zambians, again, a lie to make it seem like he's got a solution. Oh, he's working at a solution. He's doing nothing. Let, let's quickly jump to another critical issue. Obviously, small businesses, you've outlined them, being hurt by load shedding. The mm -hmm. cost of doing business will go up. But alongside that, COVID again is back in right. the picture. Mm -hmm. uh, numbers are beginning to go up. Mm -hmm. uh, we're being told to start observing masking and things like that. How do you look at the response? But... Uh, more importantly for me is the last 48 hours, cholera again um, is in the looming, vendors must leave the streets, the Minister of Local Government gave a warning, 24 hours later the President overturns that. What's going on? Like I said, the level of incompetence in the UPND is shattering. 
there is no coordination. In everything that they do, there is a lack of coordination. But let me say this before we get into the question you've asked. Have you ever seen or heard the Minister of Energy, a Mr. Honorable Kapala, talk about load shedding? No, Costa. Have you ever heard the Minister of Green Energy talk about load shedding? No, Costa. The people talking about load shedding is Zesco and the President. Why is that? The ministers don't work? Big question mark. Just put it aside. You talk about cholera coming. Honorable Garin Combo said, this is not correct. Let's move it. Didn't he consult his boss before he made that ultimatum? 24 hours later, he's summoned to, you know, state house like a schoolboy and told to retract and go back. And then what are we doing? This is the lack of coordination in a government. This is the lack of understanding of what is supposed to be happening. This is why I'm saying Haga Inde Ichilema is so detached from reality that he is going to make decisions that are going to seem like he cares for the people. This is a populist decision that he has made against what Honorable Garin Combo did. The pronouncement that Honorable Garin Combo did he has been told, don't implement it now because the president wants to remain popular so that people think and feel he is a caring president. He doesn't care. Should we remove the vendors in light of cholera? I think the vendors know that when it's time to move, they'll move. When there's diseases, they know what to do. They're responsible by themselves. And I think we should leave the vendors where they are, but when they're sick, they know what to do. That's my view. COVID, some health experts are saying there's been little investment in terms of mass you know, testing, though, again, people feel if we mass test it, it brings about euphoria of too many numbers. But <laughs> PCR tests uh, are not being put in place. Uh, this is before I even touch the issue of shortage of medicines. Let's just talk COVID <laughs> and the health response. We have my sister, um, Honorable Masevo, as the Minister of um, Health. Costa, the Minister of Health is in shambles. A very big ministry. Like I said, the last time I was here, I was talking about the budget. Health was given 10% of our budget. She is trying, in the limited resources that she's been given, to try and give the Zambians some semblance of a working system. It's not working. Recently, there was a report by the doctors themselves who had gone around all the 10 provinces and declared that a state of emergency must be declared for the lack of medicines in the country. What does that say? Now you've got COVID plus cholera coming up. What does that mean? Our people will be dying in numbers. And I'm sorry to say, that position won't change because the budget is limited. Sylvia Masebo, Honorable, has got limited resources to work with. But we also have a government that will not understand that health cannot be bargained with. The best health, actually, Costa, is agriculture, is food. But once you have 5% of your budget going to agriculture, that is what you're saying to your people. This is how much importance I attach to this. This government doesn't care. It's not a caring government. And we must call this government for what it is, irresponsible, period. They argue that they've done far much better than, you know, previous administrations. They found a health budget at around 6 7%. They've upped it to 10% that you <laughs> refer to. Um, the report by Zambia Medical Association, there was another one in Parliament that... Uh, uh, unfortunately, the UPND refused. It's the same report. To, they just rejected to, it. To, to, to adopt. Mm. Uh, we've seen the vice president go around a few, about six, seven hospitals uh, in Lusaka. And that tour was saying essential med or basic medicines are, are, are available in the average <laughs> of 63%. Uh, have you done a check yourself as Zambia must prosper? What, what, what is obtaining on the ground as so far? or insofar as the supply of medicines. We've spoken to a few experts. We know that contracts and, and, and really supply agreements have been cut uh, 
suspected corruption and there's cleanup happening within the Ministry of Health procurement. Could this be the problem? Costa, the viewers must understand that at the rate we are traveling as a nation today, there will be no improvement in the health sector until the UPND is kicked out of government. The UPND does not care whether or not you find drugs in the hospital. They don't care, as long as they have their drugs. They are rich enough to buy their drugs. They are responsible only for themselves. This is who they are. This is a capitalist government. There's no social element to them. There's no poor policy to them. Nothing. So when you bring about a policy that's going to say we have to spend money on the poor people, they don't care. They would rather give you prescriptions. Now you ask whether Zambia Must Prosper has taken out tours. Yes, we have. Quietly. We have. We've visited hospitals. We've spoken to people. But more importantly, Costa, we've spoken to professionals. Doctors working 24-7. Doctors who lab assistants who don't have reagents, radiographers who don't have microchips or whatever they call them, those films, to take your x-ray cost. They're frustrated. This is the kind of leadership you have. But they only move when one of them gets sick. This is irresponsible. And you cannot have this kind of government for too long. No. We must change this government. I want to say to the Zambian people, the UPND, in whatever they are trying to do, they are only trying to impress the colonial masters with the IMF. That's it. Talking about the IMF, I have read that the IMF, you know, chief is headed into Africa, and most likely, you know, Zambia. Mm -hmm. um, in the next you know, couple of weeks, mm. um, there are concerns equally regards our foreign relations. In a recent you know, trip to the U.S., mm. um, when signing the $150 million you know, uh, project with Congo, one U.S. senator described President Hitler as one of those African leaders who is taking back U.S.-Africa relations into its right perspective and obviously whipping China into the space um, where it should be. Uh, not exactly those words, but mm. I'm sure you know uh, the statement I'm referring yes. to. Yes. Um, how do you look at our current positioning, um, the IMF vis-a-vis -vis foreign relations? I mean, the president was asked this question and he said, for him, there's no, the, the, there's no favorite. We continue to maintain relationships with all our partners, our international partners. That's another lie. I'm sorry to say, another lie. Costa, it is immoral, totally immoral, to think that you can pay your debts to people you owe this much and leave out a person you owe that much. It is immoral. Our greatest creditor today <coughs> as a nation is China. We know that. Our greatest debt as a nation is owed to China. So there can be no dismantling of a debt without China sitting at the table. First of all, I want to thank the Chinese people for all the developmental projects that they've given this country, for all the help that they've given this country in historical times up to now. That's one country that has never colonized any nation in Africa. But it has come here to help. The IMF wants China off the negotiating table. And Aga Indeichirema is their boy. I'm sorry to say, and that's the truth. And that's what that statement basically meant. They're very happy with him. But when you've got a nation to which you owe 70 to 80 percent of your debt, not sitting at the table, how are you dismantling the debt? I remember reading in literature when I was at school, was it Chunya Achebe, Things Fall Apart? Okonko was being told, the sun shines on those that stand before it shines on those that lie below them. 
you must always talk to the person you owe more before you talk to the person you owe less. We owe the West far much less than we owe China. Has the president, has the UPND government ever gone to China and shown the respect that is due to China? Not in my view. On the other hand, you, you heard the president say when he took over office, you know, Zambia did not even have credentials to hold foreign relations. Uh, he described <laughs> them as they, they had crumbled. Um, you heard him mention how, you know, uh, I mean, one statement he made, he says, when I sit with other presidents, they, they get shocked that Zambia can have a president of his caliber, just the levels of, of how low our international credence, you know, had, had gone down. And that's why he had to spend a bit of time in, 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 in fixing this. But we, we saw other opposition parties putting even a petition <laughs> to the U.S. Embassy. They want to understand this deal around, you know, lithium and the $150 million, mm. AFRICOM. Do these things concern you as Zambia of course they prosper? Do. Of course they do. Are of you also of the view that we're being mortgaged as of a country? Of course, of course. Of course. I mean, look, historically, our colonial masters, through their forefathers, came to these parts of the world for one purpose and one purpose only, to secure their interests. They came here <coughs> because they wanted to take our raw materials. The agenda has not changed. What has changed is the players. And when they find a person with so much of a complex, as Aga in the Ichinama, in State House, they're happy because they can manipulate him. He can be made to dance to their tune. And they will obviously be happy with him, and he will be happy with them. When he was talking about our international relations having been broken, he meant the West. Of course there was a bias against the West by previous regime because the West will never build a will never build a road for you, Costa. They will never build the Kaputa Road. They will never build the Chiengi Road. They will never build the Munilunga Road. They will never build the excuse me. Changombo Road. Because as far as they're concerned, it doesn't concern them. It's got no economic value. And you've heard this from the Minister of Infrastructure himself, Honorable Milupe. That's how they think. They don't care. This is not a caring government. And they've been drilled to think like that because they know that this doesn't sit well with the IMF and those so-called relations with the West. But when you say to the Chinese, we need a road in Lukulu, they'll build it. We need a road going to Kaputa, they'll build it. We need a road going to Nakonde, because this Great North Road is one of our very important roads. They'll build it. That's who the Chinese are. They'll look at your interests, but they'll never impose things on you. The West imposes their conditions on us. The historical argument has been that the, the aid or partnership that comes with the West obviously looks at a number of things. We call it this supervised, locally grown solution. Fiscal prudency, and, and we're rooting out corruption. Mm. Uh, we're also dealing with partners who are morally high standing in terms of human rights records and <laughs> things like that. So there's been this historical <laughs> argument that the, 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 the downside of dealing with China or Russia or, I mean, these have no moral high ground, they violate human rights and, and they don't care how corruptly you spend the money, but the IMF will come in and supervise you in a prudent and fiscal manner um, in running the affairs. Costa, we must ask ourselves, who gives the IMF or the West the moral right to judge. Who are they? Like I said, from colonial times to date, this is what their forefathers believe about we 
as Africans. And because they have a president like Aga in the HLM, they believe that. This must be perpetuated. We can't. Those days are gone, Costa. Zambia is a sovereign state. Zambia must be allowed to choose its friends. Zambia must be allowed to deal with whoever it wants to deal with. Whether Zambia is going to deal with Russia, whether Zambia is going to deal with China, that's up to the Zambians to decide. Not the West, not the IMF, not the Brentwood organizations. Are you telling me there's no corruption in the USA? I can tell you stories. Are you telling me there's no corruption in the UK? I can tell you stories. Are you telling me there's no corruption in France? There's no corruption in Belgium? There's no corruption in Germany? The European Parliament was just talking about corruption recently. Don't tell me about corruption. It's a cancer everywhere. We, as Africans, must be proud enough to say this is our destiny. We can decide our destiny. And you have no right to tell us who our friends can be or why. And that is the problem we have. We have a leader in State House today who believes he can only listen from the West. That is what he was talking about when he was saying our relations and whatever. That is the confidence he was exhibiting, exhibiting when he was saying by 10 hours, assuming I'm sworn in by 14 hours. No, no. They have shown him that he has no credibility. They cannot give that kind of carte blanche credibility. No, he has to pass certain tests. And he's failing right now. The rate of the kwacha is another thing we can talk about. Because I remember one of, is it you or some other journalists discussing with the president on the rate. And you are saying, no, the rate when PF came to power was 24, 22, 24. Costa. The guy doesn't even know his facts. On the 11th of August, 2021, the Kwacha was trading at 16. Kwacha. Bloomberg was saying this is the best trading currency. That time, he wants to make it, it was at 24. Where does he get his figures from? Who is he to start giving us wrong figures? We know these things. We have never reached that level. The highest the quacha has gone is 22.6, never 24. So he, he has this grandiose idea that he's a savior for Zambia. He has come to get us out of our economic malaise when, in fact, he's digging a hole for this country. This is a wrong president for this country. And the Zambian people must begin to see him. One of the first such. things, obviously, the UPAD alluded to when they took over power was the high debt you know, burden. And, right. and he described coffers you know, as empty um, uh, 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 treasury on import cover that was far below the recommended three months of you know, import cover in terms of reserves. And when you look at they are one year in office. Part of the things they talk about is that they've managed to bring, you know, reserves up to the required standard, a stable, you know, quacha that you talk about. Mm -hmm. But within the last 17 or so months, one other thing we need to point out, the Minister of Finance had a town hall meeting and $2 billion worth of debt has, you know, that they've attracted in terms of loans for current, you know, running, you know, projects. Mm -hmm. um, how would you look at their plan to dismantle and restructure debt vis-a-vis -vis IMF, them taking loans. We're still at a standstill, by the way. We're not paying back as of yet. How well have they performed in this area? Miserably. Miserably, Costa. The UPND government has been singing its own praise from the highest temple, but they've done nothing. You are journalists, and the Zambians watching me will bear witness. Name one project the UPND has started since they went into office. One. Not a single clinic, not a single hospital, not a single referral hospital in the health sector. Not one single bridge have they built. Not one road. So what projects are they building? The Minister of Infrastructure, Honorable <coughs> Nilupi, he's silent. What infrastructure are they building? 
This is exactly the point. They talk about figures and monies, which they are using for one or two other things, but not for projects, because they've been told by the IMF, no projects. Remove subsidies. Do not do this. Do not do that. And that's the effect on the economy today. CDF, probably, um, again, through the President's speech to Parliament, he described this as unprecedented in Zambia's existence. No government or administration <laughs> has gifted the people such kind of development decentralization to the tune of now 28 you know, million kwacha uh, that each constituency enjoys. Costa, the CDF rules were relating to 1.6 million kwacha. There are no regulations about 28 million kwacha and now it will be dispersed. So how is it going to work? The civil servants don't understand. The council workers don't understand. How is this going to work? Government doesn't work because you've made a pronouncement. Government works because regulations have been put in place. A policy statement alone is not enough for the council or the civil servants to move. They follow rules. They are scared to touch this money, some of them because they don't know whether they'll be arrested tomorrow. There was a PS, or is this a deputy PS, who dispersed two million kwacha somewhere in Western Province. He was fired. CDF money. Why? Guidelines now have been issued. It's, it's at provincial level. That My point. They make pronouncements, then they say, we have done this. A proper government proper government, Costa, first plans, gives the guidelines, makes the plans based on the guidelines, then they implement. You do not force things down people's throats. You can't give me money, hold this money, but there are no rules about how I spend it. Then you say, but I've given you the money. When people complain, you, you're saying, no, but I haven't been told how to use this money. And that's there, right? They are saving their jobs. They don't want to be fired. This government works in reverse gear. This government doesn't understand how government works. And this is the problem I have with the UPND. Having spent so much time in opposition, one would have thought they would have gotten it. They didn't. Mm. Be before we run away from the, the economic issues, mm. um, something in relation to power, but I want to move on to the minds. Right. Um, you rightly said it uh, before that uh, we, KCM and Mopani right now are, are not operating at their optimum. No. Meaning that we've got nothing to sell as a country because that's, that's basically where we get you know, our forex. Question number one, do you see resolve from this administration in sorting out KCM and, and Mopani? Secondly, could this be the reason that probably we're substituting power for copper? Yes and no. Yes, in the sense that we don't have any foreign exchange earnings. We're not producing our copper. Therefore, we're selling something which will give us foreign exchange. That's an immediate answer. But I want to apologize to the people on the copper plate. I, I totally understand. I'm a copper lab boy myself, and I know what it is to live on the copper belt. This government will not sort out your problems with the copper belt because this government doesn't understand mining. We thought they did, but they don't. And the problem is, even when they have put their own liquid data in the mines to try and solve these problems, they're not solving those problems. Why? When you don't pay the contractors on the copper belt, when you don't pay the people that actually do the actual mining, when you don't replace the pumps, you don't replace the equipment that are broken on the mines, you cannot operate at optimum. Let me give you an example. There are certain pumps, big pumps, underground, which can only work for a certain duration. After that, they have to be replaced. Recommendations have been made. 
We need to replace these pumps. They're not being replaced because according to the UPND government, they have to keep using those old pumps. If one of these mines floods, let's not have that on our hands. It's on the UPND and the liquidators have put there because they don't want to spend money. To them, they have to make a profit. The miners are now cannibalizing from this old machine to this other machine so that things can just keep running. The mines don't work like that, Costa. Some equipment underground, some of the big machines, which are as big as this room by just a tire, they, they have to be replaced constantly. They're not being replaced. The reason is the government doesn't want to spend money. So the production on the copper belt has gone down. The contractors have been laid off. That is why there's no money on the copper belt. What should the balancing act, you know, be right now? Um, I hear sometimes the UPND say Zambians must not forget that this mess was created, you know, by the PF. So we need to be reminded. On the other hand, yes, we were voted and we promised that we 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 are capable of sweeping you know, this debt, uh, or dirt rather, that was left, you know, by, by, by the PF. Um, are the problems too big for the UPND to handle, or <laughs> they, they didn't know exactly what they were getting into? What should the balancing act, you know, be? Because, mm. you know, KCM and Mopani issues, truth be told, were inherited. Yes, they were inherited. But let's go back to where I started from. The UPND in opposition, especially its leader, Aga in the Italy, lied. <coughs> and he keeps lying today. These problems they're talking about today are not new, Costa. When UPND was applying for a job to take over government, they knew these problems. And they'd been in opposition for so long. So why didn't they have solutions before taking over the job? This is where I have a problem. You can't apply for a job when you know there are problems where I'm going, but you go with no answers. You want us to feel sorry for you? No. Take responsibility. That's what leadership requires. Again, like I asked you in our last you know, interview, was it so much for you just your hatred or your vengeance against the PF that you helped put a liar into office? so that the end result is about getting Edgar Lungo out of the way? I don't think it's about vengeance. And hate would be too strong a word. <laughs> I don't hate anybody, Costa, let alone my older brother, ECL. I don't hate him. He knows that. The PF knows that. I think everybody in the PF understands what needed to be done. What needed to be done was to protect and preserve the constitution of this country because the PF was going against the constitution. It's that simple. And so we ended up, in your words, putting up, putting a lie in office? Yes, we did. And you played a part in that? Yes, I did. I have no apologies for that. Alliances are made, and we made an alliance. But this is the funny part with Zambians generally. I walk out of the alliance and people want to blame me, but they aren't seeing it exactly as I saw it before. And this is a goodness about having vision. You can see a liar from a distance and you're able to disengage and move away from him. Now, because you saw it first, that doesn't make you wrong. No. The Zambians are going to experience what I saw in Aka in the HLM as a liar now. And that's why I disengaged, because I didn't want to be part of this mess. I realize he has no solutions. I realize he's not going to help this country. I realize he was already caught. State capture was already obtaining with regard to the Brentwood organizations, the West, the IMF. He's not going to do anything against the West. No. He can call the Chinese or with the friends, but that's just, you know, buttering up the relationship. There's concerns regards food security in this year that we've, we've just started, right. owing to the confusion and just the, you know, the disruption surrounding 
input distribution. As we speak, this is January, certain farmers have not yet gotten the their fertilizer. <laughs> uh, but this government says we are cushioned. What are you getting on the ground insofar as, you know, food security? But also the president says if he did not intervene in cancelling the, the procurement contracts around fertilizer, he saved us around 153 million U.S. dollars. You heard him mention yes. those figures. Yes, yes. Unfortunately, another lie. Another lie, Costa. If he saved that money, from which areas, which sectors of procurement did that money come from? Did he mention the sectors? Of course not. But he'll give a blanket figure. But you and I go to church. And we have different churches. But we're Christians. Here's a thought. When Joseph was in prison, having been put in prison under the first, what we can call, <laughs> I don't want to use the term, but it's there, sexual harassment suit by a woman, Potiphar's wife. Sexual harassment, by the way, is about power. It's not just about gender. Potiphar's wife was in a position of power, so she put Joseph in a position of going to jail because she lied about him. She wanted to seduce him, he refused, but anyway, long story short, he had to go to jail. Joseph is in jail. He doesn't lose his ability to interpret dreams. When Pharaoh is faced up with this dream that he can't interpret, one of the people who was in the dungeons remembers there's a guy who interprets dreams. They call up Joseph. Pharaoh says, this is my dream. I see these slim seven cows swallowing these fat cows. How much time do you think Joseph had to resolve this economic situation? It's not a spiritual problem here. It's an economic situation. Joseph was able to tell Pharaoh, seven years are going to be profitable and prosperous but we need to save for the next because there will be famine. And then they started planning. He became prime minister of Egypt. What point am I driving at? Haga in the HLM and the UPND government have had 23 years in opposition. They've seen the problems this government has had to deal with before taking over government. So they cannot sit in office today and begin to say, no, we, 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 we couldn't see that. No, no, no. Zambia has got a cycle. And we know when fertilizer is due to the farmers. We know when we're supposed to give input support to the farmers. We know when things are supposed to be imported, etc. So they knew. And being in opposition for so long, they should have been planning. When we get into power, this is what we're going to do. Did they do that? Of course not. Everything is chipante pante. Everything is haphazard. Everything is about, no, 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 don't do that. No, don't do that. The UPND government, today, I'm sorry to say, has no plan on fertilizer. Did the president, for instance, explain when he said he had saved $153 million that he also gave a contract of $50 million to some friend. So what saving did he have? Did the president explain that he also gave other contracts to his friends, which he sent for emergencies, and they needed to solve some problems? So when you say you save here, but you give your friends business, are you really saving? No, you're just shifting the goalpost to make your friends more comfortable. That's not saving. Kelvin Fumewale, thank you so much for coming through to Costa this evening. Thank you very much, Costa. number of issues obviously touched on. Remember that you can download the Airtel TV app on your phone uh, just in case you miss out due to load shedding on all the programming uh, such as Costa as well as our news desk at 8. Remember also we're on Facebook live streaming Diamond TV Zambia. Good night and God bless. Good night.
Foster was brought to you by FQM Trident Limited, a subsidiary of First Quantum Minerals Limited.